Hey, you guys. How's it going? Oh, boy. <clears throat> so, I was uh, supposed to get this going yesterday, but I got sidetracked. And um, I really want to continue um, embellishing some of these cards, like the flashcards and uh, recipe cards and things like that. Uh, bingo cards. And so I thought I would just sort of take you guys along on my little journey. Um, I would like to do this as, as far as like for the video. Um, I thought it would be nice to try and do some of these without the sewing machine. And just to kind of give people some ideas about how you can attach things to things without using the sewing machine. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I love using my sewing machine and I use it for a lot of stuff, but <clears throat> I thought, you know, maybe a lot of people don't have a sewing machine or um, don't know how to use their sewing machine. So, so I thought that could be fun. Um, so basically, I've just been pulling out, oh my God, I just have like bags of, bags and boxes full of all kinds of scraps uh whenever i do like fabric covered journals um and i wind up like trimming the edges of fabric and stuff i always save these little these little pieces you know that i that i trim off so and these are all just like from old quilt tops and things like that even like little pieces of um uh seam binding i always save those you know so anyway, so I just have these little bags of scraps and whatnot, and they're fun because you can just, I mean, you can super easily embellish something for a junk journal um, just using those little, those little tiny scraps, you know. Um, one thing that I like to do is just obviously just like punch a hole in it. And, well, let me just pull out a little pile of these. Now, some of these are, like, ridiculously small. And, you know, but as I'm going along um, trimming things, I don't, I generally don't sort out the size of the scraps, you know. But, <clears throat> so they all just wind up getting shoved in a bag. But the easiest thing to do is to just glue it on so it kind of stays put, you know. Just a little scrap and and a lot of times when I'm trimming the edges of journal covers and stuff fabric journal covers I use my pinking shears and that just kind of gives it you know if you don't have a sewing machine using pinking shears if you don't know what pinking shears are um, there are these scissors that have the zigzag um, blades you know so that sort of gives you a little bit of a sewing sort of feeling right um so just you know just glue a little strip of fabric uh onto the edges um you know something like a library card like this i don't like to whoops i don't like to cover up too much of the card because i want people to be able to still write on it you know um, so just glue some little strips and let's see, let's find something else. Just like a little tag, just using, this is just an all purpose glue stick, nothing, nothing fancy. And I'm just adding a little bit, just a little bit of glue just to kind of tack it down. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not gonna, I'm gonna do more to this, right? So let me add another little piece on here. Let's see. Something scrappy. So I um I know I feel like I'm always I feel like lately every time I make a video I'm trying to sell something and I feel kind of bad about it. Like I feel kind of guilty about it. But um but I wanted to let you guys know also that um, I went through 
I wanted to, okay, here's my thing. Here's my thought. So <clears throat> I've been really into crocheting lately. And so I've been watching lots of different crochet channels, you know. And um, so this one I'm going to fold over onto the back. Anyway, so I've been watching all these crochet channels. And um, one of the channels that I watch the lady that does it, <clears throat> she was offering in her Etsy shop a listing for a thumb drive with all of her crochet patterns on it. And <clears throat> so you, you know, you buy the thumb drive. I don't know how much she was selling it for. I didn't, I didn't actually go look at the listing, but, um, Anyway, so she was selling the all of those listings on a thumb drive for a flat price, you know. And so I sort of thought that might be kind of cool to offer like a whole bunch of images from things that I've scanned, you know, um, just all kinds of stuff, ledgers and um photos like old photos and uh antique like receipts and um handwritten stuff french stuff just you know because i've just got so many things that i've scanned and obviously you know i'm not going to get it all put into digitals and so because i'm just i don't know it's just not my thing right like doing doing digitals it's just not my thing I do have some digitals in my shop, but so anyway, the point is, is that I wanted to offer them for sale and I wanted to do kind of like a mega pack of them. Okay. So I thought, wow, I could go on Amazon and buy a bunch of thumb drives and, um, and offer them on my, uh, you know, in my Etsy shop and load them up with like five or 600, uh, you know, images. And then I was talking to my friend, Tracy, Tracy Fox. I was chatting with her this morning and, and she suggested that I just do it through WeTransfer rather than, you know, um, having to buy the, um, having to buy the, uh, the thumb drives or the flash drives or whatever. So there's this other bag of scraps here. Um, these were, this is all scraps from the little, little mini journal covers that I included in some bundles a couple weeks ago. Um, Anyway, so she suggested that I just put them all into zipped files and maybe just do it through WeTransfer. And then, so she kind of walked me through it and helped me figure out, you know, how to get it done. And so what I did was I put together, I just went through all my, my pictures on my computer and I pulled out basically, I mean, like a bunch, a bunch of, um, a bunch of images that I thought I would have, you know, used for, um, for digitals or what, you know, whatever. And, um, and I just put them all into a big file. Actually, I did two files. One is, uh, one is, um, oh, what am I trying to say? One of them is like all French stuff. I'm going to tie this on here. Sorry if I'm kind of like, I don't know, kind of out of it, but I figure you guys can see what I'm doing while I'm, while I'm talking. Um, oh, here's what I think I could do with this. Let me see if this will work. So I'm going to just cut a little slit here. I was going to tie this on there, but I thought that might be a little too bulky. Anyway, um, 
So I put together this gigantic pack of, um, no, I don't really like that. Never mind. This giant pack of images and, and I put it in my Etsy shop. So, um, there's actually like almost 800 images. I want to tie a piece of fabric on this. <laughs> um, anyway, so I put that in my shop today and so basically what it is, is, is it, it's just literally like all kinds of crazy stuff, not crazy stuff, but all kinds of images. Like I said, scans of old postcards and ephemera and uh, ledgers and notebooks and see what I mean? That's all I wanted. Uh, notebooks, just a gazillion, just a gazillion of them. And I put those all into one listing in my shop so if you're interested i will put a link in the description um to that to that listing and you can pick it up and the nice thing is i think is that so i want these to be i want people to be able to use them for whatever they want and and that includes um digital file like digital listings so you know, if you're somebody who makes your own digitals to sell, you can use this stuff in, in those, in those, uh, those creations. I, I don't, I don't care, you know, it's so <clears throat> I just put a little piece of a, um, an old, uh, measuring tape. It's a fabric measuring tape onto a card and then just staple it on there, you know? Um, anyway, so that's what I wanted to tell you guys about that. And, <clears throat> and I think it's, I just think it's really cool. It's just like this giant pack of all kinds of different things. Some of them are repeats like of, of some of the digital listings that I've done. Um, but they're unedited. Okay. So it's basically, it's just like, whenever I have a stack of things that I want to scan, um, I'll do, that's what I'll do like for a couple hours. I'll just sit and scan stuff, you know? And <clears throat> so that's what this is. It's just, it's just, just piles of, um, ephemera and whatnot that, that I've scanned and I'm offering those to you guys. So anyway, so that's that. Um, so I'm just taking some little, just little, I like this piece, but I have to find something cool to put it on. Let's see. How about this little, about this little guy? Maybe just light up right, right there on the bottom. Okay. So I'm just kind of gluing some little scraps on these just to kind of give you an idea of where I'm going with this. So those are kind of temporary. I'm going to, I'm going to do more to these just to be sure that this stuff stays put. Another little scrap on there. Okay. All right. So got some, got some little scraps on these cards. Let me put this stuff back. So this is kind of just like very uber simple, no so um, embellishing. Okay, so I've got these so you can tie things on. You can tie things on. You can staple things on, and this will flatten out when it's inside of a journal. You know, like it'll go inside of a pocket, and you know it'll when the journal's closed, it'll, it'll flatten out. Um, so that, and then I thought it would be kind of fun if you just took some eyelets because you don't want these coming off, right? Like over time you, you want things to stay put, right? So just use your crocodile. Oh, 
punch a couple holes. And just do an eyelet on each end. And that way they for sure won't come off. Plus, I think I love eyelets. I love using eyelets on everything. Whoops. Uh, and in case anybody wants to know, I buy the assortment of that assortment of eyelets on uh, HobbyLobby.com when they go on sale. They go on sale for half price. And I'll buy, like, there's 600 in a box. And I'll buy, like, you know, seven or eight boxes. So anyway, so just use a couple eyelets to attach things. Um, and if you do one at each end of what you're, you know, of the piece that you're trying to keep, keep attached, then it won't, it won't come off. It'll... It'll stay put. And you don't have to use your sewing machine. Okay, so just a couple little eyelets. Um, and then obviously you could do the same thing with, um, with brads. So using a brad, you could even add more to it, right? Like you could add like a little piece of, I don't know, like a little piece of ephemera or something. You could add like a little card or, um, let's see, just some, some kind of little, little piece, like a, like an anagram letter or, or like a little, a little tag, a little tag like that. You know, just some some tiny little little thing, letter A, and where's my little my little deal? So if I'm gonna use this, I could just punch a hole with it, punch a hole in it. sort of layer things sort of layer things under there you know um, where's my hole there it is So yeah, I get those at Hobby Lobby. Um, <clears throat> and then, obviously, stapling. Let's put a couple staples in it. Or we could do, let's see, we could do like needle and thread and stitch it on with a needle and thread, which I think looks pretty cool. And then you can even add like a button or something or a couple of buttons. And wait, let's just do this. Let's do this little one. So you can just punch some holes, get a piece of foam. Piece of foam punch some holes using whatever, an awl or something. It's just, just makes it easier to get the thread to go through if you punch the holes. And then you can just do a whip stitch all the way, you know, along the outside edge. Obviously, this 
you know, takes longer, but, but I think it looks cool. And they don't have to be all in a perfect, you know, perfect spacing or whatever. Kind of rustic, right? Just some little stitches. Could use like a colored thread too. That might be kind of cool. And then just tie a knot. Make sure your knot's kind of at the end or um, slip it through, slip it under one of these stitches. It pulled it too tight to do that. But um, if you put your knot on the side where the fabric is, then it's much less likely to come undone. So what I was what I was trying to say is if you slip it under one of the one of the stitches, then you can just knot it like that. And it won't come undone. I mean this is kind of funky and weird, but but I think it looks neat. And I love when I see that like on junk journals when people do that kind of stitching on things. Anyway, so just, you know, you could stitch things with, with sewing thread. Um, obviously, you know, tape and glue. Um, I've done lots of this, uh, like fabric washi using the carpet tape. But I will say this is not carpet tape. This is just that Suk Wang double stick tape. Um, <clears throat> but this is carpet tape. Carpet tape is extremely, extremely sticky. And you can't sew through it, like with your sewing machine. Once you, once you stick it down to whatever you're going to use it on you can't stitch through it again with your with your sewing machine because it will totally gum up your needle um but i will say also and i will tell you i guess is what i'm trying to say um it will also gum up your scissors so what i've been doing is i just add a little bit of sewing machine oil or any kind of oil like vegetable oil or you know three-in-one oil or whatever just add a little bit onto the blades of your scissors kind of oil them just a little bit before you cut through this stuff um so that the glue won't stick to your scissors anyway so so you can just cut little strips these are just scraps of um you know, quilting fabric and stuff that I, I, I just stuck onto the, um, onto that tape. That Suk Wang, um, double stick tape that people like to use, it's not as bad. Um, you can, you can get away with stitching with your sewing machine or with a needle through it. And it's not as terrible as the carpet tape is, but um, I, I don't really, it's hard. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of a hassle anyway. So I just wanted to, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys real quick about that stuff and just kind of give you some ideas about just using up little scraps of fabric and, you know, little, little bits and different ways to attach things without a sewing machine. You don't always have to have a sewing machine. And you can do those little, you can even make like little clusters, uh, little fabric clusters, just with the needle and thread, you know. Like I've done a lot with, uh, on the sewing machine, like done like snippet rolls and stuff. And then you just, you know, you can just cut the little strips. These were stitched on the sewing machine, but you don't have to do that. Like you can just... Uh, 
oh my gosh, this giant tray of stuff. Um, I'm getting warmed up now, you guys. So I had a whole bunch of, uh, this was a tablecloth. And I look at all of those, those embroidered flowers on it. Isn't that cool? Um, so I kind of like fussy cut the flower, some of the flowers off of that. And so I could just use them, just the, just the flowers by themselves. Um, anyway, so here's how I do just really super simple little fabric, fabric and lace clusters. I'll use the rest of this one little piece of thread. Whoops. Of course it came unthreaded and I can't see. Okay. There we go. Um, I'll just take, so I don't want to use those cause those are actual little clusters. Um, like some kind of little piece of fabric and I'll put that on my needle and then I'll add another piece of fabric on my needle. Um, <laughs> I want to use a piece of this uh, eyelet. And just kind of making sure that you can see a little bit of each layer. Uh, I want a little piece of lace. Just a little piece of lace. I mean, once you get started making these, you could just sit and do them for hours, you know. Anyway, so just like three or four layers of fabric and lace or whatever. And you can make them any size. And then I like to use a button. I like to use a button on these. So I'll pop my button on. Pull it through, push it back down. Now I also like to have, I like to have the tied part of the string on the front going through the button too. So if that's, if that's how you like it, then, you know, you just kind of have to do it the opposite way. I mean, those are secure. They're, they're not, they're not gonna, none of those layers are going to come apart. And then that I could just hand stitch onto a little card or something too, you know? Anyway, so I just wanted to just kind of show a couple little things, for, you know, that, that you can do without a sewing machine or like if the power goes out or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, but use your eyelets too, because eyelets are great for holding things together. And, um, and they also give you a way to, uh, they also give you a way to add like a little charm on, on a card or something too, you know, using, um, using little jump rings. So anyway, so just short little short little video oh i wanted to use one of these little flowers on that cluster too and i forgot but you know so you would add maybe a little flower on there so fussy cut your uh embroidery <laughs> and and use those flowers all right so i'm gonna hang up but um i'm gonna keep working on these and just get a whole bunch of i mean look at i embellished all of these cards in you know 20 minutes so, and they don't have to be complicated. They can just be really simple, especially if you're making journals that you're selling and you want people to be able to journal on them um, 
and 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 add their own um add their own expression to it so you're just kind of giving them a jumping off point and that's why that's the way i look at a lot of my uh, journaling cards and tags and stuff like that. Like, I don't want to go over the top embellishing things. I, I want people to, to be able to do that on their own. So, um, <clears throat> anyway. Okay, guys. So go check out that listing if you have been in need of digitals or if you've wanted, you know, to have access to all of my ephemera. This is a pretty good opportunity to do that. And I don't think you'll regret it if you decide to buy the the, the pack. It's actually, um, there's quite a bit of stuff in there. So um, I couldn't add, obviously, images of everything that's included in it because the Etsy just won't let you do that. But um, And so it's a download from WeTransfer. So when you buy the listing, um, <clears throat> you'll get a link to download a PDF and in the PDF there's a link so do it on your computer so don't do it from your phone right but <clears throat> when you when you purchase the the listing you'll download the PDF in the PDF is another link and in that and you click that link to download your files so you don't download the files from Etsy because Etsy won't let sellers uh, store huge files like that on their server so but we transfer will and um, if you pay for their service so so I decided to go ahead and pay for the the you know service on we transfer so they'll host the file for me and and then you guys just download it directly from there there's two zip files that you'll get not from Etsy but from WeTransfer, what you get from Etsy is a PDF. In the PDF, there's a link. That's why you need to do it from your computer. Click on the link in the PDF, and it'll take you to the WeTransfer website and to, right to where you'll download your files from. And you can download both files at the same time, but make sure you got two zip files when, when you open it. Okay? Just click the download now button when after you jump from the pdf to the we transfer website click that little button at the bottom of the list there's a you'll see there's a list of two listings or two files don't click each one each file just click the at the bottom where it'll say download now and you'll download both files if for some reason you don't get both files that window stays open so you know if you don't get both files um, you can click each one individually, but, and then there's no expiration date and you can download them again any, any you know, anytime, as long as I keep paying for the service, um, you know, they're there, but put them in a safe place, like save them on a file, on a, a flash drive or, you know, something like that. I would recommend backing them up somewhere because at some point in time, I might not renew my service with WeTransfer and, um, and I would hate you to lose, hate for you to lose access. So, so do download them as soon as you can and back them up onto something else. Like back them up onto like a little, put them on a little thumb drive or something. So you, so you always have them or, you know, store them in your cloud, you know, wherever you store files. So, okay. <clears throat> so once you download them, you're good. But, and then, like I said, you can use them for whatever you want, even things that you want to sell. I just ask that you, um, you know, alter them in some way, like, you know, use them to create something else, not just like take my images and then, you know, crop them and sell them on Etsy. I just, you know, I would just ask that you don't do that. And please do not share the link that comes in that PDF because, you um, if if that starts happening then you know i don't know what to say but i just i just think that that's unethical and i would appreciate if you guys did not do that i don't think anybody would but you never know um so that's that but if you have any questions you can definitely send me an email and i just think that that makes it a lot easier for me to share my ephemera and the things that i spend time scanning and money i spend buying stuff 
um, it makes it a lot easier for me to share it with you guys. So rather than, you know, with individual little digital listings on Etsy. So anyway, okay, guys, I love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, you know, hanging out. I'll talk to you soon, sooner than later. Okay, bye for now.